I'm here with Lee Scott from Starag, and today we're talking about Blisks, an aerospace part. Um, this is one of uh, a few episodes that we've done that are on our channel, all about aerospace machining, the different materials, and also a lot of the parts that are on the aircraft. And as I say, today specifically, we're talking about Blisks. Lee, what is a Blisk, and where does it go in an aircraft? Well, if you think about a traditional turbine blade that sits into a disc and, and, and it's connected and it's assembled. Uh, a blisk is a bladed disc, so it's a one-piece system where the blades are an integral part of the disc. Okay, so it looks essentially the same as a disc with the blades in, and there is an episode where we, uh, in amongst the episodes of the aerospace sector, where we talk about specifically about blades. What's the reason that you'd have, and where would you have one of these, compared to um, a disc with blades being attached to them? Well. Aero engines still use traditional blade and, and, and disc type systems and you have a series of rows of, of, uh, of, of, of different sized blades uh, as you go through the engine. Um, you, you have uh, blisks manufactured from nickel alloy which tends to sit at the back of the engine and then you have some blisks that are manufactured from titanium that tend to sit somewhere in the middle of the engine. Okay, so we have also learnt during our, our various episodes how you machine a blade. Um, how do you machine and make a blisk and what machines would you offer that do these? Because there's quite a lot of machining in, in what we see here. Well, it's, it's the same strategy in terms of you need to machine around a complex aerofoil shape, but instead of machining over, you've effectively got to come in from the end. So tip entry, as, as, as we call it. If the blade's very long, you have to come in from the side, from both sides and blend the blade down the length of the blade. So there's different strategies, but fundamentally, blisks tend to be fairly short bladed and you use a tip entry approach. And what sort of machine would you use? What are we seeing here that you offer? What you're seeing here is, is, is a machine configuration that's been designed specifically for blisks. So from an automation point of view, you've got a spare pallet and, 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 a, and a component loader. And from, from the working side of the machine, a horizontal spindle, very, very dynamic um, two axis system to hold the blisks so that we can rotate the blisks and we can orientate the... the it, it would strike me the, the, the bigger the, the blades on the blisk go, like you say, the longer the tool you need, the more opportunity for kind of vibration and issues with surface finish and stuff like that. How do you overcome those aspects? There's no straight answer to that because every, every different blisk has its own different strategy. So there are, there are some um, blisks that are actually water jet before they're even offered to the, to the machining centre. Some of them come in as solid, some of them have short stiff blades, some of them very long thin blades. So some may be machined opposing aerofoils, some machine all the way around the aerofoil, some machine almost as, as a pocket, if you like. So different blisks, different materials, different lengths have different strategies. And when it comes to making a part like this, clearly it's a, it's a critical part of a, a, an aircraft engine. What sort of tolerances and precision do you have to, or do you look to achieve with something like this? Because that's got to be massively important. Again, very much like a, a, an aerofoil turbine blade that we spoke about in, in a previous discussion, you have an aerofoil profile that has to be measured along the length of the blade around the full five axis profile. So in terms of the whole profile, tolerance depends on the blisk again, but you're talking just a few microns. And that is in order to give you the most efficient engine and reliable engine. For sure. So there you have it, another episode in the series where we're talking about aerospace and components and aerospace machining in general. And this one has been all about blisks. Mm -hmm.